Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to our Lunch and Learn today. And I think you're noticing something um, very, uh, you know, out of place. Yes, that's right. Casey Eberhart is with me today and not Vanessa Hunter. But, 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 listen, you're going to learn today. Uh, I've known Casey for over 10 years, probably closer to 15 than 10. This guy is a business consultant. He's a business coach. He's one of the smartest marketers that I know on the planet. I remember running into his first product. It was a DVD, and I think it was like 132 ways to market your business. Just freaking brilliant guy, brilliant mind, brilliant marketer, and a brilliant coach. So I'm really happy to have Casey with me today. Casey, welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. Awesome, Joe. It is it is truly an honor to be here. And uh, I know you and I were just talking off camera even, and and I love talking about our topic today. I could talk about it for hours and hours and hours. And I, I know you said, hey, look, we're going to condense this into 30 minutes. So uh, this is the gold call of as much as gold as we can pack into 30 minutes. That's uh, exactly right. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's exactly right. So listen, I want to start with this. We're going to talk about integrated marketing today, and what is, I'm going to, I want to even define that right now, really quickly, so people even understand what we're talking about. If you think integration, integrated marketing has to do with automations, it doesn't. It's how do you integrate the mailbox into your communication with your customers, or how do you integrate the mailbox into your business and your overall marketing strategy? Is what we're going to be talking about today. And I was talking to Casey this morning, and we identified that we're going to talk about the seminar business. We're going to talk about the insurance business. We're going to talk about the real estate business. We're going to talk about network marketing today and how they can integrate the mailbox into their overall communication strategy or uh, maybe prospecting strategy. Uh, it's going to be a fun, to fun topics for sure, but we do need to know what everybody's having for lunch today because we always get there and want to know what you're having for lunch. You know, I'm a foodie. If you've watched a few of these, I have issues with food. I love food. Uh, and I haven't had lunch yet today, so make me drool. Go ahead, post in, the, post in the comments what you're having for lunch. And if you're an East Coaster um, and you've already had lunch, just tell us what you had, and that would be awesome. So anyway, good to see you, Marie Benoit, Natalie Becker, Kathy Baxter, Jeffrey, uh, Jennifer Nielsen, uh, Nanette Mueller. All right, awesome, really good. Strawberry Shortcake Shake. Woo! Love. I would love one of those right now. You really, really have. I already had a shake today. Cup is clean. <laughs> Anyway, Casey, are you ready to get started? I, I am. And what I love about the idea, well, it's it's really a marketing concept more than anything. If this integrated marketing concept, um, and I know you alluded to it, it's it's I would even say it's bigger as an overall strategy for businesses to market themselves everywhere all the time. Right. right? And so we know uh, as prospects and as human beings, there are people that commu are communicated with and they take in information and advertising in a multitude of ways. Some people like to read things. Some people like to touch things. Some people like to see things. Some people like to, li like to talk to listen, like to listen to things. That's why some people, you know, I'm a podcast listener. I love listening to podcasts. I love watching sure. videos. I'm not necessarily a pick up a book and read type of type of person but i also like touching things right so the the idea of integrated marketing is really almost if you think of it from a visual perspective it's creating a spider web for a client or a prospect with multi touch points so that we can communicate a message and bring that customer closer to our business and not let them leave because we're not communicating to them in the way that they want to be communicated with right Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I'm glad you brought this up before we dig into this, because I want everybody to ask a question to yourself. <laughs> and me and Casey talked about this earlier. How many times when you sign up for a service or purchase something from a business, do you opt out of their email? How many times do you just say, nope, I don't want any emails from this. I'm just here. I just want to buy this and, and move along. That's probably happening in your business right now. Uh, maybe you over communicate, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe you don't communicate enough. Uh, but what I do know is the open rate of an email is pretty darn slim nowadays. And I know, you know, historically, myself and Casey, I'm going to admit we're old enough that, yeah, we were around when email started. And, you know, it was a really cool thing. You got mail actually meant something. And, you know, it made us all go, "Ooh, I got mail. That's really important. But today it's different. 
you know, it's 2021 and it, it's different. Uh, when you got mail means somebody's intentions are in my inbox is really what it boils down to. Yeah. I mean, I think Joe, one of the things is, yeah, we opt out of stuff, right? But um, we really opt out because we don't find value in what we're receiving. Right. right. right? When we throw a, a postcard in the mail or th if, when we throw a postcard in the trash or we dump an email or we say stop on an SMS text message. Yes. That is our way of telling the sender or the marketer in this case, hey, you're not providing enough value for me to give you even a sliver of my time. <laughs> right. It's not the email's fault. It's our fault for not communicating value to the prospect or to the other end. I have emails that people send me that send multiple emails a day and I open every single one of them. Why? Because I get value out of it. That's right. When I get an envelope in the mail and a greeting card, if I perceive it to be a greeting card or a gift, that sucker is being opened. Yep. Right? I go to my voicemail or my text messages. I'm going to give a quick text. If there is some kind of value in that, I'll keep it. I'll save it. I may or may not respond, right? But if there's no value and it's just spam or it's just buy my stuff, buy my stuff, and there's no real intrinsic value to this for, for, for me as an audience member, it's easy to hit stop. That's exactly right. right. Yep. So you have to remember it's sort of like the reason why integrated marketing is so powerful when it's done properly is that it allows Joe to opt out of an email but still be able to communicate with them because what we've really told him is, Hey, Joe, you don't see value in our emails. So Joe opts out, but Hey, we're going to send you a birthday card. We're going to send you a half birthday card, or we're going to just say a thank you card that might, might trigger Joe to stick around a little longer. That's right. Right. And in the game of marketing, our job is to have business phone us, call us, walk in the door, send orders in, whatever. And everything that we can do to be able to do that is part of this integration plan. And right. when businesses truly understand the different modalities and what's available, where the real opportunity lies, I believe in 2021, having worked with thousands of business owners around literally the planet, is in the direct mail mailbox space. And that is something that, that we as a culture, I don't even know if that's the right word. We as a society somewhere decided that email was cheaper. So we'll just do that. Yeah. Right. And then what happens is you spend all this time and energy and money generating an email list that now you're communicating crap to. And then Joe opts out of it. Yep. You know, Casey, you, you bring this up. This funny, the value proposition. I, I was listening to, uh, I don't even remember who was Seth. Uh, I, I, anyway, they were talking about, the history of mail and email. And he said, hey, listen, you know, mail really started back in the days of Rome when they created these roads between cities and then they would charge to take a message from one city to the other. And that was kind of the beginning of mail. And when somebody got it, they knew that you spent money, you invested in that communication. And then you fast forward to, you know, the late 1990s and it was email. And all of a sudden, spam in the 2000s was a big thing. And we all knew, well, that didn't cost that person money. They're just spamming me. They're just sending me something in hopes that I will buy out of the million people they sent something to. But when you use the mailbox, the recipient knows that you actually spent money for that communication. You invested in that communication and you invested, if it's your customer, you invested in the customer. Now we get to the message, right? That message you... I, I only want to add in there, the customer occurs after the marketing has delivered its message and the customer has stepped forward to buy a product, good or service. Let's even take a step back when we're selling stuff, Yeah. right? Now we're in marketing. We have to bring that customer along the finish line or bring them over to the finish line. That's right. So it, I, I think we have to also make sure that we're talking about how we keep a customer. That's right. Sell more to that customer bring back past customers, yes, right? But at the same time, we also have to bring along newer folks into the fold and we call those prospects. Yes. <laughs> a lot of businesses um, miss where their money actually is. They miss the fact that the, the vast majority of their money is on their current customers, not leaving, 
That's right. The second value proposition is bringing the customers that have left, bring them back into the fold. The That's hardest right. group of people to buy stuff from us, no matter what we're selling, are brand new people. That's right. If you don't have an integrated marketing plan for your business in basically those three buckets. Yep. This is a great place to start. And Joe, I, I, I pulled an article and I, I, I'd love to be able to start the conversation this way because I think this kind of Do ties it. in exactly what you're talking about. Do it. So in the email world, there are email service providers that are CRM systems that allow multi-touch campaigns to be built in an email sequence, right? So we call that nurturing sequences or sales processes or promotional emails or whatever. We've all, we've all received a bazillion of them, right? Mm -hmm. so I happen to work with a company called Keep. Keep is the, probably the largest and the most difficult to use <laughs> integrated email uh, campaign. It's a great company. They made it a thousand times easier than what it used to be. But they send out. Now, I want you guys to think about this from a, from just a marketing perspective. They are an email online only marketing service. Yep. They, they don't they don't get into people's mailboxes. They focus their business owners getting into email boxes. But isn't it interesting that they send out a physical magazine every month to all of their customers? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I actually don't receive emails from Keep. I receive a physical magazine. So this was last month's magazine, right? And I found this to be super curious. I'm going to just read the article title, and then I'm going to read the three... Uh, the three bullet points that they have okay article is called are you underestimating print marketing <laughs> why direct mail isn't going anywhere and how your business can leverage it bullet points is analog really dead which is email right mm -hmm. why print newsletters work yep win attention build trust and your recipe for marketing success they are talking about email marketing as their service, but they are not only that, they are literally promoting an integrated approach. They just don't have the skill set to right. add that into their marketing mix. Yep. That's where we come in and go, look, here's your customer over here. Let's be able to add in some print marketing there. And now we've got this kind of this omni-channel approach where we're bringing all of these messages together because, and I'm going to go back to Joe. Joe's a busy guy. He gets thousands of emails in a week. He's got literally a nanosecond to capture his attention. Absolutely. But when he goes to his mail at the end of the day, and I'm Joe, I'm going to steal a little bit of your quote from earlier today. Good. He sorts, he pre-sorts his mail, like yep. many of us do. You go yep. to your mailbox, you get it. What, what happens? There's two piles, trash, not trash. Yep. What is the nanosecond, specific nanosecond that, that as a marketer, I have to be able to get you to do? I have to figure out how to get my message or your customer's or your message in the non-trash pile. That's right. That's right. Because right? we all sort our mail that way. That's what we do, right? Absolutely. Oh, so you got me or this is junk or whatever, and this is going in the trash. And well, truthfully, folks, if it's got your name on it, it's for you. <laughs> and you know it and it goes in the pile, which means I have to look at it again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even when we started sending emails, when we started sending emails and we put a subject line, when we sent that out, that got really old and tiresome until the new technology came out where you could use merge fields in an email. And all of a sudden we started getting these emails in the subject line that said like, Casey, how to, you know, how to grow your business in five seconds. And it's in the email and you're like, these people took the time out of their day to write my name in the subject line, right? And that was it. And we were all excited, right? And then that got kind of tired and old and we had to come up with something new. And then it was like, Casey, blah, 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 on the subject line. And then you open it up and it said, howdy, Casey, which yep. was just another use of a merge field, like That's reality. It. But we were like, is there yeah. somebody sitting at their message, their email, just cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, yep. cut and paste? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, Casey, we got to get to it. Man. We got we have yeah. four different businesses to cover right now. We've got 15 minutes to do it. I want to start with the seminar business and I want to talk yeah. about the seminar business and how do they integrate the mailbox? Because like it's the most least likely candidate to use the mailbox in most people's minds. Right. Yeah. So yeah. the seminar business, explain the seminar business for everybody so they understand at least what we're talking about. The, that oh, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to blow fast through this just because sure. this is the space I live in. And quite frankly, I'm more interested in the next three businesses. But okay. here's the deal. 
<laughs> the seminar business usually goes like this. There's a speaker and a promoter. They get together. Sometimes it's the same person. Sometimes it's different. And they bring a group of like-minded people together in a room. They educate and give value and content. And then they sell you stuff. We've all been there, right? We get to the end. Hey, here's my pitch. Here's the price. Here's the bonuses. Let's rock and roll, right? Yep. So in the seminar business, it's all about, um, we have a term in the seminar business as a speaker uh, and as a promoter. We have a term called butts in seats. The entire business model of the seminar business evolves around butts in seats. How many people will actually show up on a Zoom or a webinar or in a live event so that we can give the opportunity to invest in whatever product, good or service we're selling, right? right. So I'm going to blow through just a couple of examples. First is just an actual event. So I did an event. Uh, I do an event myself and I do it multi multiple times a year. And I started integrating the mailbox in terms of our registrations. Okay. okay. So I'm going to go through three different cards that we sent in the mail with their perspective results. Card one had my logo on it, all my crap on it. It looks terrible. It's me, 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 me. It's, this is all about me, right? So <laughs> open it up and it's me, 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 me. Hey, come join the fun. This is awesome. Yep. And, and we even put a QR code in there, right? So you QR the QR code, you get registered for the event. Whoa, 2% response rate on this. In the world of direct mail, 2% response rate, people are clicking. Their, they don't even know what to do with themselves with a 2% response rate, right? So I wasn't thrilled with that. So the next time we did the event, I did the exact same uh, exact same card, but I tested it. But So I added this. So I added a little verbiage here underneath the QR code. I'm going to read it to you because I want it, I want you to hear what how we changed it. Grab that phone that's either in your hand right now or within reach. Open up the camera and scroll over this. Then simply hit the red button to join me as my super VIP guest. Right? I literally had to tell the person what to do. Literally the phone that's in your hand. That's right. Send this same card out, 6% response rate. Absolute, like our team was, we didn't even know what to do. We were so excited about 6%. Next one we tested. Same exact inside. Okay? Same exact inside as this guy. Same exact, but this time we just eliminated the spam message on the front and put the person's first name on it. This was a design that we just pulled from the mailbox power design store, had the name all over it. 11% response rate on people we sent this to, to join the event. So by taking a card, we went from 2% to 6% to 11%. There's no business on the planet that with an 11% response rate isn't going to bet the house and bet the ranch, right? That's now, right. Way more butts in seats, right? Yep. To give me the opportunity to sell whatever I was selling. But I have two friends that have taken this beyond far and they run events and they wanted to really create impact. And when businesses and speakers and coaches and stuff understand impact, the game is wide open. So I'm going to show you two different quick swag boxes. And uh, so here's one swag box. I want you to notice the people's name on it. So I have a friend, Ken, who does an event called Pride. Produce ridiculously irresistible digital events. Okay, that's the name of it. So he sends me a card with my picture on it that says, Casey Everhart rocks Pride. Inside of it. He's added a swag box uh, with with postcards so that people during the Zoom presentation could uh, raise their Oh, that idea is crap. You just raise this up. The speaker knows, hey, move <laughs> along, little doggy, right? <laughs> Sent a personalized journal for people to take notes on what they were learning to keep them contained in this, again, with the person's name. And then because he knew that we were going to be having long days, he put a mug in here that says, peace, love, and pride with however it was, with a name on it. I spoke at this event. Every single person at the event had this mug on their desk and held it up when I asked, hey, if you have your mug in, in on your desk right now, raise it up. He was so blown away. He didn't even know what to do with himself because we had created impact, right? Second swag box, Joe, and I know I'm going fast here. but Hold on. Was there chocolate in that box or not? Uh, yes. He, he did add some brownies. What, but happened? They, what happened to the brownies? They are currently resting on my butt cheeks. Okay, just checking. All right, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> right? So uh, that just means they're eaten, by the way. I'm not right. sitting on them. Right? So, um, so I have another I have another amazing client. Her name is Deborah Thorne, and she runs a, 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 an event for speakers, authors, trainers, and coaches called the Leverage Conference. Mm -hmm. So she sent out a swag box. This is a swag box that came in a box. 
let's look. Casey's swag box, information diva, the leverage conference. And if you'll notice on this one, it's actually got sponsored by on there. So she didn't even have to pay for this. The sponsored paid to have access to be in front of her um, audience members. So we, she believes in that we eat together, we stay together, we have a great time together. So in her swag box, I don't know if you can see this, she's got Casey's happy hour snack, Casey's breakfast. Then there's Casey's afternoon snack. Then there's Casey's after party snack. And then there was a mug in this one as well. Now, think about the impact that this has on everybody. I've attended the leverage conference. I can't throw this away. Yeah. That's when that's when integrated marketing is at its finest. When okay, we can so the, integrate impact. So the typical, the typical seminar business is all digital. It's email, websites, mm -hmm. capture pages. That's pretty much it. Yep. So you've added in the ability to prospect to actually get people to sign up for a seminar. Mm -hmm. You've added a, a really kind of an intense marketing piece uh, that makes them want to show up to the actual event. Because like you said, the goal is butts and seats. And we know that people sign up for events and then don't show up. Absolutely. And the swag box encourages them to actually show up and there's, enjoy. There's a couple of things this swag box does. Number one, it increases show up rate. By, mag, by by orders of magnitude, right? Because they almost feel guilty that you spent this invested yep. in them and they didn't show up, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> right? <laughs> Number two, from their point of view, most of them are used to doing swag, but they might have 30 people at an event and they have to order 140 mugs or 140 tumblers or 144 mm -hmm. t-shirts that aren't personalized. And so um, they, don't, they don't really have the same impact. The right. third thing is, let's say they're gonna go buy all of that stuff and bring it together. Now they have to have somebody put it all together, make the package, and in and, and now we're wasting time. Where right. when we integrate with something like Mailbox Power, they do all the work. They print each one individually. Somebody up, some you know, elf somewhere is like putting all of this stuff into the box and packaging it all up. It's COVID pandemic free. It's hands free, <laughs> yeah. which allows the owner to be able to do whatever they want. And one last thing. These swag boxes, when you are trying to work with people of influence and get better speakers at the seminar business, sending them a swag box with their name on it is a heck of a lot juicier and more classy than just an email. Yeah. And I have to say this as well. And I know this this Pride event, this is not just a U.S. or Canada based event. Worldwide. People all over the world that are getting these swag boxes. So if you didn't know. Mailbox Power will ship anywhere there is a postal service. So if you want to ship somewhere that, uh, you know, that's out of the country and you had no idea we could do that, absolutely can, for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt. So this has been great. Seminar business. Anything else you want to add about the seminar business case before we move you on? You know, I think this, the seminar business, whether it's digital or live, is all based on the relationship between content and value given and content mm -hmm. and value invested in. He or she who gives the most content and the better experience will always win the game. Agreed. The other thing this does is just a side note is this gives these promoters a little bit more of an edge in terms of an error rate because somebody can go, oh, I didn't really like that speaker. And if there's no impact and feel good, it's pretty easy to go, well, I'm not investing in their CD or their tape or right. their G program or whatever. But when the impact is there, you get a higher margin of error in your ability if something goes a little haywire. It, the, the, the audience is more forgiving, I should right. say. Because right. they already got a great feeling in how you've made them feel and the impact that you've already created before the thing even starts. Yep. It, well, I think it's fair to say they've been treated like they've never been treated at any other seminar. 100%. That's the, I mean, I, how many seminars have you attended? I mean, thousands. Yeah. Literally, both of us, thousands and thousands of seminars. Yeah. And frankly, I can't remember getting a swag box. Ever. Yeah. Ever. You know, I might have got a form letter of some kind, but that was pretty much about it. So, OK, let's move on. Yep. I want to talk about insurance agents. I think it's a good time to talk about insurance agents and their typical business and how they integrate the mailbox into what they do. And I just want to speak really quickly to the typical insurance transaction, <laughs> because the word transaction is truly the problem uh, at hand. What I see is this, there's a competitive nature to 
the property and casual insurance business where it's people are just shopping for price. Like, hey, I'm trying to get the cheapest auto insurance, the cheapest homeowners insurance, the cheapest blah, blah, blah. Right. And that's one piece of it. And then there's the life insurance and, you know, the investment side of that business. And that typically is not as transactional uh, as the property and casualty. But there's still something very common about the insurance business. And I just want to uh, just ask this question. Have any of you ever received a gift from your insurance agent thanking you for their business? I'm, I'm guessing probably not because it's not commonplace. And what we're trying to do with the insurance space is, is basically convert it from transactional to a relationship. Because what we know about relationships is they don't cheat on you. They stick around forever, right? It's a lifelong customer and they live on commissions. So we look at the typical insurance agent and it's, it looks kind of like this. Premium notice, premium notice, premium notice, premium notice. I could keep doing this for days and just saying premium notice because that is the typical insurance business approach. Once the customer has purchased the policy, we just keep sending premium notices and that's pretty much it. It's been commoditized. Right. That's why people are basing it on price because there's no real value. It's commoditized. That's exactly and right. so what you've done so well talking about insurance agents is that we've got a hold of the insurance agents that actually value their customers and we're pulling them a, a, away from the center of just pure commoditization because now they don't have to necessarily only sell on price. That's exactly so right. Beat every time. That's exactly right. Now, there's a couple of components to the insurance business that are really important. Prospecting. What do I know about prospecting in the insurance business? They pay dearly for leads, like literally like $75 for a name and a phone number. And really that name and phone number came from Joe Namath's, you know, TV commercial that went into a call center that actually ended up into an insurance agent's, you know, uh, ear uh, with that phone number. With so, multiple agents. Yeah, with, yeah, they sold that like 10 times. So now you're out scrapping with, you know, 10 other agents to get that piece of business. Yeah, and they, I really haven't seen too many other forms, uh, you know, outside of the captive agents who are getting, you know, leads from television commercials, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you kind of get that. So prospecting is a big deal. You can build a list right in the mailbox power system of your perfect customer in the per in that area that you want to prospect to. And you can send them a postcard or a greeting card to get a hold of them and it works and it's effective and it gives them new customers they've never had, they've never talked to. And guess what? The chances of them scrapping with 10 other insurance agents like they're doing with those leads they buy, pretty much nil, not happening uh, and very effective. But that's just one component. The other component is a typical mailbox power insurance agent, user uh, insurance agent. It works something like this. The policy is purchased. The premium is paid. This insurance agent now sends a thank you gift, which is actually a gift in a box with a card profusely thanking that customer for the business. And then premium notice, premium notice, premium notice, happy half birthday, Mr. Customer, Mrs. Customer, we love you. Premium notice, premium notice, happy birthday, customer, here's a gift and a card, we love you. And premium notice, premium notice. And again, I see a lot of insurance agents starting to deliver value. I'm so glad you said that earlier because they're delivering value in postcards, a series of postcards. They know they're a homeowner. They bought homeowner's insurance and they put them on a drip campaign to talk about how they can maintain their home, right? You know what I mean? Who knew you had to actually use Roto-Rooter for the dryer vent, you know, that goes outside to exhaust the heat out of your house? No idea. I'm like, what? You got to do that? <laughs> okay. Uh, or, you know, when you should change the batteries and your alarms and stuff in the house. I mean, I think there's just so many ways uh, for the insurance space to use this and integrate the mailbox into their day-to-day -day business. And I think what this really does, it makes that customer feel special. That's the real deal. I mean, that's what we're really talking about because premium notice, that doesn't make me feel good. That's another bill. Right. I mean, unless I got it on autopilot, I'm not even looking. That just doesn't make me feel good. But when they send me a gift and actually thank me for the business, who does that? Well, yeah. Uh, insurance agents who want long term longevity out of their customers. That's who does that. The ones who want to keep them forever. And just to tag into that, Joe, while I know you're pulling up the next slide, I'll use my dad as a great example. My dad was a veterinarian, right? Yep. 
our insurance agent became such an integrated part of our family that he had all of our home policies, my brother's policies, all of my policies, our family's policies, all the vet clinics policies. And then he was, he was so good at integrating impact and value that he had every employee at the clinic, all of their car insurance, all of their health insurance, okay. all of their life insurance. Yeah. I mean, that one customer, meaning my dad, resulted in, I mean, I would be shocked if the number of policies that my dad was responsible for just directly was under 50. Yep. And that's why I think sometimes agents like this can miss the mark. They, they're looking at one guy or one gal. Oh, she bought a motorcycle. Okay, let's go sell the motorcycle. But there's yep. a there's a spider effect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we're running late. So let's talk about realtors and then we can kind of call the ball. I think we'll be good. Uh, realtors, Casey, you know this space really, really well as I do. So let's talk about realtors, the typical realtor and what they do and how they transact business. I'll let you go ahead and get started. They are, they will all tell you they are super busy being busy, but none of them are producing results. <laughs> like at the end of the day, that's what it is. Talk to any realtor and I promise you they will tell you and make you feel like they are so busy they can hardly even keep their head above water until you ask how many deals they've actually done. The realtors that build long-term relationships and continuously grow their sphere of influence and bring those referral partners closer to them, the less work they have to do. Yep. So a, a realtor, we know the stats, right? Somebody buys a house every four to five years, right? I, I, I'm, it's, it is shocking to me how much realtors leave on the table because they don't understand a long-term value of, of a customer. They make huge commissions on every sale. Absolutely. Right? I mean, I'm just, I, I gotta tell you, this is just a true funny little story, but um, I'm currently um, closing on a house today. Literally, like as we're doing this, my house is closing, I sold it. My realtor came over who happens to have integrated Mailbox Power into his marketing sequence. And he came over with one of our laser engraved charcuterie boards during the inspection and laid out food for, for all the people that were all the people that were there, the inspectors, the buyer, the buyer's agent, all of this. You know what was really interesting? Every one of them said that he was so classy that they would use him again. And so I would be venture to say that our buyer and her agent would probably use our agent again. And she wouldn't use him again because of the class act that he did because he created value and impact. That's right. That's exactly right. And you know, it's funny, I, I've told this quite a few times to quite a few people in big audiences that I've purchased and sold eight homes in my lifetime. One realtor I've heard from back and it was the most recent one. And it wasn't in my mailbox, but that's okay. I actually heard back from her and she's a totally class act and awesome but there's still no consistent communication. There's nothing going on that's consistent. And I look at the realtors and go, we have that program for them. Not only can they prospect through our system, you know, often I build a mailing list that says, hey, you want to find a buyer. I know finding a buyer in Los Angeles right now, like you could just like uh, throw up for sale sign up and guess what? There's 200 of them right in your front yard. Like, wow, but you know, things will adjust. And, and in, that's not at the case in every state and in every city. And what if I do list a home for sale? Can I find a qualified buyer through Mailbox Power and through that mailing list builder? Yes, you can. Qualifying with income, uh, their net worth, which means they can write a check for a down payment. What about their credit score? And are they renting right now or do they own something? I mean, you could go out and find the, the perfect, perfect uh, customer to buy a home and to sell a home. There's lots of ways to use the system, but that's just one way my favorite way that I really want to talk about, though, is the long term. Like, really, folks, you got to be playing chess, not checkers, okay? <laughs> when the deal's done and you cash the check, you are not done. The relationship just started. And, you know, we have what's called the ultimate closing gift. Now, typically, what does the typical realtor do? I can tell you because I've received the crappy $45 basket on the million-dollar home sale that had bad cheese and some dry crackers and, and maybe bad wine. But anyway, we look at what we have in the ultimate closing gift. Every 90 days for two and a half years, that homeowner now gets a gift from the realtor. They will never be forgotten. 
it's not just a greeting card or a postcard. It's an actual gift that shows up in a box. How special do you think that homeowner feels by receiving a gift every 90 days for two and a half years because they purchased a home through that realtor? I look at that and go, wow, what a a win, win, win. Now, not only that, we have the realtors who constantly drip valuable information upon that homeowner. And we have these pre-done campaigns that are 12 and 24 months. It's a postcard that goes out, you know, every month of the year for 12, 12 or 24 months. I just look at this and go, they're adding value. They're pouring value into the lives of that consumer that made a purchase from them. And, you know, I hear this, you know, these kind of things often. Tony Schwartz, one of one of our mailbox power users, he calls me and goes, so I sent out a coffee mug and a greeting card and some brownies to somebody who just had a baby. And two weeks later, I get a phone call and here's what it sounded like. Hi, is this Tony? Yeah, this is me. Uh, listen, I was told I have to use you to sell my home and find a new home because you're the best ever. Can you help me? How many realtors get phone calls like that on a regular basis? Probably not many. And that had to do with him paying attention and pouring value into the life of that customer of his. Well, Joe, let me let me take just 30 seconds. Let's let me tell it tag in on what you said. Today marks my 57th real estate transaction. I want you guys to think about that for a second. 57 real estate transactions. The guy that sold me my first house here in Los Angeles, very first guy. Never even so much to send an email or a thank you. I can't even remember his name. 57 transactions he walked away from. Start doing the math on that. Yeah. And we won't even talk about, I have a loud mouth and my yap job. So the number of referrals that I've thrown out are huge. But Joe, you just said something about Tony. That was, that was critically important for all business owners to understand. What Tony did there for 10 bucks was create a double-ended transaction. I was told I had to use you to sell my house and buy my new house. That's right. For 10 bucks. Yep. So when we're talking from a business owner perspective, a $10 mug and some brownie with somebody's name on it, Yep. gets a phone call I gotta buy and sell through you. I mean, that's and, where- And there's that, countless. Countless examples of the realtors. The realtors truly, um, for everybody who's listening, the realtors are the ones who helped us build this business because a lot of them understood exactly what we had and how it could be of value to them in their specific business as in their day to day. And and Joe, let me just say this. Here's the here's the realtors that helped grow and build the foundation of what we have here today at Mailbox Power. And if you're a realtor, this will make sense to you. If you're not a realtor, I'll explain. The corner offices are the ones that built this business. The realtors that have the trophies on the wall, that are doing stuff right, that are turning out huge turnover in deals, growing right. teams, they understand the power of investing in their clients and in their sphere of influence and their sphere of network. That's right. The, the sideways offices, they're all trying to get into the corner offices, but they're a little waffly. They're like, oh, I want to do, I want to be in the corner office, but I'm not totally sure that I want to do what they're doing. Yeah. And then you got the group of people in the cubicles in the middle. Right. And they're looking at the corner offices and they're looking to those people. And so when you look, I've had conversations with hundreds of realtors at this point. And I'm pretty much down to a point where I'm like, look, where's your office located in the office? <laughs> I already know who I'm going to have to have a, an easy conversation with or I'm going to have to explain a bunch of stuff to. Right. It's those realtors that get a fire under them to either get into the corner office or they're already there. They get it. They do. They do. And, and I'm going to tell you about those folks, because I know we have several of them on here that yeah. that really are the core group. Yeah. And they are all um, the ones that helped us put this on the map to help them grow their corner offices to the penthouse. That's exactly right. Exactly right. You know, it's funny. The you know, last last story I want to tell about the realtors. Um, we have a realtor who's a mailbox power user, and her name's Eileen Schwartz. And she sent out a St. Patrick's Day card to every single customer she'd ever done business with. And one of those cards reached somebody that she had sold a home to like 17 years before. 17 years before. She sends it anyway. She knew their address, they had moved. And guess what? Not only did she end up selling that home 
again, helping them find a new home, but she also had the opportunity and got to sell the home of the mother-in-law. Bam! For a greeting card, a St. Patrick's Day greeting card that was 50 cents plus postage. I look at that and go, okay, that was an investment worth every single penny. So yeah, awesome stuff. But it's easy not to do that. It's easier to put a post on Facebook that says, happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Or it it's is. easy to send an email that says, happy St. Patrick's every day. That's right. Here's the great thing about mailbox power is that it is almost as easy as sending an email with a, like a gazillion percent increase in return on investment. That's exactly right. And we get back to the conversation. Email was free to them. Didn't cost them anything. They didn't make any investment into the okay. lives of that consumer. Email, free, didn't cost them anything, right? Push a button. But a greeting card with a real stamp on it and their name on it, that costs money. That's communication that somebody spent money on to communicate to that consumer. And they feel it. They feel it. And here's the thing. Email is awesome. I think actually yeah. one of the things that we could do is by integrating it, and I'm just thinking this out loud because I know Eileen very, very well. Um, she could actually have sent an email to her old email list saying, hey, watch your mailbox for a St. Patrick's Day gift. Yeah, exactly. Some people aren't going to be home. They're going to be on vacation. They don't really care about St. Patrick's Day. It's going to get lost in the mail. All that kind of stuff. That's why an integrated approach to marketing is always going to have an overall um, higher rate of return on that investment than if people are only focusing in on one teeny tiny little cha uh, channel. So I just think, Joe, what Mailbox Power has done is it has really brought the ability for business owners to bring back into their marketing mix direct mail That's and right. add it to whatever they're already doing. And I'm going to just make one teeny distinction. I know we're over, but I, I, I just, it's just, I've got to this out. We have talked a lot about greeting cards as a way or postcards as a way to appreciate your client and making them feel awesome. But from a marketer's point of view, that may not always be the cause. I may just need to tell someone I've got a special on dog cleaning, a uh, dog teeth cleaning, or I'm running a special on embroidery hats, right? So we can still use the same mechanism to deliver a marketing message in addition to making someone feel good. So I don't ever want people to think that the only reason to use greeting cards and gifts would be to make people feel special, although it always has that effect. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay as a marketer to go, we got a special, we got to bang this out and get this in the, in the hands of the customers. And if that's how they are ready to receive and we hit that problem with our solution and it becomes as a postcard or a greeting card, yep, we still get the sale. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Casey, it's been fun. Uh, any last words for this audience about integrating their marketing? Integrate, 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 integrate. Everything together yes. works, yeah. right? So this is not a get rid of one in exchange for this, or we're going to make our business owners wrong. What I love about the philosophy of Mailbox Power and the ability for us to make the customer the hero is that it's just another tool in that arsenal called marketing. That's why I just love this platform. I get so excited about it because it's so not used effectively by 99.999% of your competitors yep. that if you'll just give it a shot and give it a try, work with somebody that, that understands how to integrate all this stuff together, easy peasy lemon squeezy and I'll see you in the Mediterranean. <laughs> I love it, Casey. Well, folks, I really appreciate you today. Uh, integrating your your marketing and using the mailbox will create a harmonious uh, communication platform for you that you probably have never seen before. Uh, we, uh, If you don't know uh, about Mailbox Power and you're just listening to this for your first time, uh, reach out to us. Let us know. We'd love to help you. We'd love to get you started. We'd love to make your phone ring. We'd love to make you happy customers that give you referrals like you've just heard about. Uh, these are the things that we do and we do well. Uh, we're well practiced at it, well versed. So anyway, uh, thanks again, Casey, for showing up. Uh, we certainly miss Vanessa and all the slides today. Sorry, everybody, no slides. That's It's not me and Casey. We just don't do it well. <laughs> so anyway, um, have a great day and we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joe.